The suspected Golden State killer caught more than 40 years after his first crime. For the 51 ladies who were brutally raped in this crime scene, sleep better tonight. He isn't coming through the window. How his arrest could impact cold cases here in San Diego. And most of the migrant caravan from Central America is in Tijuana tonight. How Homeland Security plans on handling President Trump's order to not let them into the U.S. Plus suicides in San Diego jails higher than any others in the state. Team 10 investigating the conditions that some are pointing to as a reason. At this hour, investigators are searching the Sacramento home of the man believed to be the Golden State Killer. They're looking for clues that could link 72-year-old Joseph James Giangelo to at least 12 murders and dozens of rapes that went unsolved for 40 years. The attacks terrified people in Central California in the 70s and 80s. And our tenders reporter Steve Fiorina is live. And Steve, local investigators, they're now cracking open cases to see if there's any connection. This killing spree was so widespread that uh, and there are a lot of cases that need to be reopened and reviewed. Now, the uh, suspect in the case, a retired police officer from uh, Auburn and Exeter, California, many years ago, he was fired for shoplifting, now facing charges involving very violent, horrendous crimes. Brutal crimes, rapes of women while their husbands were nearby but unable to stop the assaults. Some couples then bludgeon to death. A dozen murders, 45 rapes, 125 residential burglaries from 1976 to 86. Blamed on the Golden State Killer, the East Bay Rapist, the original Night Stalker. Suspect sketches were circulated, but no arrest until now. 72-year-old Joseph James D'Angelo booked into Sacramento County Jail. No bail. This map shows crime scene locations already in the books. Now, cold case files are being reopened throughout the state, including San Diego. We have his footprint, if you will, up to Dana Point, which is certainly very close to San Diego County. But when an arrest like this is made, we'd want to make sure that there is not a case that still links him. The Golden State Killer terrorized entire communities during that decade. I've heard stories of, uh, you know, fathers uh, essentially sleeping with uh, guns by their bedside, shotguns uh, very close, things of that nature. So it was impactful for a, a large amount of people. All these innocent victims, detectives obsessed over tracking down the killer, and even in retirement, brooding over it. I can remember some of the names and the times of the victims. But uh, it seemed like I left the whole job undone, not solving all those cases. D'Angelo is charged with four counts of murder, and he's suspected in at least eight other deaths so far. DNA tests and reevaluation of evidence in other cold cases may add to that number. Detectives also said that the Golden State Killer seemed to delight in inflicting fear and pain. Live downtown, Steve Fiorina. Horrific. Thank you, Steve. And even though it's been 42 years since the Golden State Killer committed his first crime, people who live in Sacramento have not forgotten the fear that he put into the entire community. I remember my mother and grandmother being terrified and my dad. I mean, it was literally just terrifying. Adults who were just children when investigators say James D'Angelo killed and raped his victims spent the day standing outside the home where he's believed to have lived for the past 30 years. I've seen this man and it's just really scary to think that someone like that lived right, you know, bumper to bumper with me. Those neighbors say D'Angelo's arrest has finally brought some closure to their nightmare. All eyes.